We would now like to welcome you to Crediting Vegetable, Noodles, and Coconut and CMPs. I'm Kashaya Heendania, a nutritionist with Child Nutrition Programs, and along with me are my colleagues Tim Vasquez and Deborah Eisenbart. We'll be providing you today with an update on food crediting in child nutrition programs with technical guidance for crediting pasta products made of vegetable flour and coconut and overview of menu planning resources available through Team Nutrition. This is the third in a series of five webinars on crediting updates in child nutrition programs. To start off, let's do a quick poll. We would like to get to know who we have in attendance. Please select the answer that best describes where you work, child care, schools, or are you with a state agency? Do you work with FNS, regional office, or national office? And if none of these answers fit you, then select other. So it looks like the poll has ended. So if we, if we can go ahead and see the results, please. And it looks like we have um, a good representation from child care, schools, and state agencies. Thank you. So in this webinar, we will cover some background about why food crediting was updated, C comments and feedback from the re request for information, policy changes implemented based on feedback received, go through some examples with coconut and pasta products made with vegetable flour, and overview of technical assistance resources available. I'm now going to hand the presentation over to Tim, and he will provide an update on the RFI and resulting policy changes. Welcome, and good afternoon. I'd like to open with a few of our commitments around food crediting. The crediting guidelines specify how individual food items contribute to the child nutrition program meal requirements. Several factors impact how food products credit towards reimbursable meals, such as the volume of the food, the weight of the food, and the overall nutrient profile. When we speak with our partners, one thing that we hear consistently is that they would like us to work towards streamlining menu planning and food crediting whenever and wherever possible. We are interested in providing additional menu planning options that meaningfully aid program operators in their efforts to build meals that children will enjoy. USDA has been listening and shares in this desire to simplify the menu planning process for all of the child nutrition program operators. Over the past year, we have sought public input for ways that we can provide more flexibility within the programs. We have engaged in a multi-year effort which took the opportunity to improve customer service by helping our agency gain a better understanding of stakeholder opinions and gather innovative ideas from all who care about our children's nutritional needs. In 2017, we published a request for information to provide all of our stakeholders the chance to share their thoughts and opinions on crediting and to gather ideas that maximize program operators' ability to serve healthy, appealing meals that children enjoy. We encourage stakeholders to submit comments on specific food items and also to share their ideas to make crediting more simple, fair, and transparent. The public comment period closed in April of 2018 and our agency received 437 comments. A majority of comments came from program operators and individuals, but we also received comments from the food industry, advocacy organizations, and state agencies. We carefully reviewed all of the comments that we received. We prepared detailed summaries with policy recommendations for each major topic area addressed in the request for information. We then used these comments to develop new guidance to update and expand the credibility of a number of food items that previously did not credit or credited on a limited basis. The result is new flexibility that will allow more options that simplify menu planning, expand food choices, and incentivize participation in the child nutrition programs. Several commenters described the positive impact of crediting uh, many of these food items. Comments emphasize the benefits of providing diverse and culturally appropriate, appropriate food choices. In response to public comment, we also announced uh, late last year that we would expand the food crediting to a number of other food items, which included hominy, popcorn, corn flour, cornmeal, dried meat products, 
dried meat, uh, fish, and poultry products, surimi seafood, and tempeh. While today's webinar is focused on crediting coconut and crediting noodles that are made from vegetable flours, we wanted to briefly highlight these other new food options too. Today's webinar is going to focus on crediting coconut, which is covered in a policy released on April 17th called Crediting Coconut, Hominy, Corn Masa, and Corn Flour in Child Nutrition Programs. Later, we'll go on to focus on um, added flexibilities when crediting noodles made from vegetable flours. These added flexibilities were released on April 17th as well in a policy called Crediting Pasta Products made of vegetable flour in the Child Nutrition Programs. If you're interested in more detailed information regarding all of these new options, we encourage you to join us during the other food crediting webinars we are making available over the coming weeks. These new crediting flexibilities are a reflection of our commitment to staying up to date with an evolving and expanding nutrition environment. Looking ahead, USDA will continue in its efforts to identify additional options that simplify the menu planning process while ensuring program operators and participants have access to a wide variety of nutritious food choices. Thank you for your time and attention today. Now let's hear again from my colleague, Kashia. Thank you, Tim. I would like to begin with announcing that in response to the newly credible foods, new yields have been added to the Food Buying Guide for Child Nutrition Programs, the interactive web tool, and the mobile app for surimi seafood, tempeh, coconut, popcorn, and hominy. An announcement was also sent last Wednesday, May 15th, as well as notification on the Food Buying Guide web tool and mobile app announcing the availability of these new food yield items. Before we go into the specifics of the food items covered today, we want to go into more depth about the Food Buying Guide resources. For those of you who may be new to the Food Buying Guide digital resources, let's go ahead and review the main features of these resources. Both of the Food Buying Guide interactive web-based tool and Food Buying Guide mobile app include the following basic features that are available to guest users and registered users of the tool. These features include the ability to search for food items by food groups and further narrow the search by food categories, the capability to do a side-by-side -side comparison of food items within a food category, such as comparing diced canned carrots to diced fresh carrots, in addition, you can create a favorites food list. You can access the resource as a guest user or a registered user. As a registered user, you will have additional features and capabilities such as saving the favorites list and access it at a later time. As a guest user, you can still save a favorites food list and access it only during your current session. But you can always print and email it. So let's continue. Before we get to some crediting examples, let's go ahead and do a quiz. So which of these food items are credible forms of coconut? Options we have are blueberry muffins made with coconut flour, smoothie made with frozen coconut, fruit salad topped with dried coconut flakes, salad topped with coconut oil, fruit salad topped with fresh shredded coconut, date nut balls made with pecans and desiccated coconut flakes. So we will now open up the quiz for you to complete. Please select all the food items that are credible. So for those of you who answered smoothies made with frozen coconut and fruit salad topped with fresh shredded coconut, you are correct. Let's review what is credible and what is not. Program operators now may credit fresh or frozen coconut as a fruit based on volume served. Like other fruits, at least one eighth cup of fresh or frozen coconut must be served to credit toward the fruit component. Juice is labeled as 100% juice, including coconut water, will continue to credit toward the fruit component. 
These items will cut it as fruit based on volume served. Keep in mind that menu planners must consider coconut caloric and saturated fat content, which may limit its frequency of use in menus due to the dietary specifications for calories and saturated fat. Please note that dried coconut as well as coconut flour, coconut oil, and coconut milk are not credible in the CMP. Now let's do an example with crediting coconut. We're going to use the recipe analysis workbook to see how this recipe of a fruit salad with coconut credits. As you can see, the credible ingredients include diced apples, grapes, lemon juice, and fresh shredded coconut. I will now go to the Food Buying Guide web tool and do a demo of the recipe analysis workbook using this recipe. But before getting to the demo, let's review what the recipe analysis workbook is for those of you who might be new to it. The recipe analysis workbook, also known as the RAW, is a feature available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool. It can be accessed by all registered users except food vendors. The RAW helps program operators determine the meal pattern contribution for their recipes. You can easily search for credible ingredients, calculate the meal pattern contribution, and print a contribution statement. So let's go ahead and do a demo of a RAW for this recipe. And so bear with me as I get the website. So we're going to go and click on Recipe Analysis Workbook. And for the sake of time, I have go ahead, gone ahead and entered some of the ingredients, but we're going to go in and edit to continue and entering the leftover ingredients. So as I mentioned before, we had in the recipe, we had fresh apples, fresh grapes, and lemon juice that I've already entered in here. And what's missing now is, is the, the fresh coconut. Since I'm having some technical difficulties with the, um, the web tool, the server right now, I'm just going to go ahead and go through the screenshots with you, um, showing exactly how it works. So as I mentioned before, we, we've already added in um, fruit, the fresh apples, fresh grapes, and lime juice. So all I had to do is enter in the coconut. So you could either search on fresh coconut to get a direct hit, or you can search on coconut as a general term. Hit search. And you're going to get the search results you'll see down here for fresh coconut, or fr fresh or frozen coconut. To add it to the raw, we're going to simply click on the Add button. And then we're going to go into the Fruits tab where we see all of our ingredients that we have added in. So as you can see, I've already added in um, for the fresh apples, the grapes, and the lime juice. You're entering in your quantity of ingredient. And then and remember, um, please keep in mind that for the quantity of ingredient, it must match um, the form that is in the food, the food buying guide. So if it doesn't, so what's in your recipe, if it doesn't match what's in the food buying guide, you would need to convert it. So if your recipe is in ounces and the food buying guide is in pounds, you would need to convert it. So for the last example, for the coconut, we're putting in um, a half a pound, and which is great. The recipe calls for a pound, and then the purchase unit um, in the food buying guide is also in pounds, so you don't need to convert anything. And then the preparation yield is, again, if the form that's in li listed in your recipe is different than what is listed on the food buying guide, you would have to use the additional information that's av available to do the conversion. So for coconut fresh, um, the recipe called for shredded coconut, so we know that it is in the same form, so we don't have to do any in conversions. So we just simply enter in half pound and it'll do the calculations for you automatically. So when we go to the meal pattern contribution tab, you're going to see how this recipe um, credits. So this recipe, the fruit salad with coconut, a half a cup provides a half a cup fruit. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, continue with the presentation. For, and I know this was a, that was a qu very quick demo. Just for additional raw guidance, please see the training videos available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool and also the recorded webinar available on the Institute of Child Nutrition's website, um, the webinar title, Team Up for Innovative Menu Planning with the Food Buying Guide web-based tool. The pasta products covered in the memo are pasta products made of 100% vegetable flours from one or more vegetable subgroup, crediting as a vegetable, pasta products made of 100% legume flours, crediting as a meat alternate, pasta products made of vegetable flours and other non-vegetable ingredients, and whole vegetable cut into noodles or spirals, such as spiralized zucchini or sweet potatoes. So then we'll go through each one um, with a little bit more detail and show an example for it. So starting out with pasta made of 100% vegetable flours, make credit toward the vegetable requirements consistent with vegetable crediting. A half a cup of pasta made of 100% vegetable flour credits as half cup of vegetable. So now let's look at some examples, starting with the crediting the 100% um, red lentil pasta as a vegetable. So the ingredient provider on the product label is shown here, circled in red, and you can see that this product contains 100% red lentil flour. The serving size is a half a cup. For the credit amount, we know that as I mentioned on the previous slide, that a half a cup of pasta made of 100% vegetable flour credits as half a cup of vegetables. So a total credible amount for a half a cup of the 100% red lentil pasta is half cup legume vegetable for school meals or half a cup vegetable for other child nutrition programs. So let's look at pasta made of 100% vegetable flour crediting as a meat alternate. Consistent with legumes crediting, half a cup of cooked pasta made of 100% legume flour may credit as two ounce equivalent of meat alternate. To credit as a meat alternate, pasta made of legume flour must be offered with additional meat alternate, such as tofu, cheese, or meat. Please note that at the discretion of the local menu planners, legumes may credit as a vegetable or a meat alternate, but not as both in the same meal. Now let's look at this example with 100% red lentil pasta as a meat alternate. The ingredient provided on the product label is shown here, circle in red, and you can see that this product contains 100% red lentil flour. The serving size, again, is a half a cup cook. For the credible amount, we know, as I mentioned on the previous slide, that a half a cup cooked pasta made from the 100% legume flour credits as two ounce equivalent meat alternate. So our total credible amount for a half a cup of the cooked 100% red lentil pasta is two ounce eat equivalent meat alternate. Pasta products made of a blend of 100% vegetable flours from multiple vegetable subgroups may credit with a product formulation statement from the food manufacturer detailing the actual volume of each vegetable per serving as prepared. The pasta product may credit towards specific vegetable subgroups. So let's look at another example. This time, a spinach chickpea pasta, crediting as a vegetable. The ingredient provided on the product label is shown here, and you can see that this product contains a blend of 60% 
chickpea flour, and a 40% spinach puree. The serving size is a half, five ounces, which is five eighths cup cooked. Please keep in mind we're using hypothetical weights in these examples. For the credible amount, we know, as I mentioned previously, that for pasta products made of a blend of 100% vegetable flours from multiple vegetable subgroups, can credit towards specific vegetable subgroups with a product formulation statement from the food manufacturer detailing the actual volume of each vegetable per serving. There are total credible amount for five ounce serving of spinach Chickpea pasta is half a cup legume vegetable and one eighth cup dark green vegetable. Now let's look at this example as a, with a product formulation statement. And again, before going through example of doing the product formulation statement or, or also known as the PFS, let's review for those of you who might be new to it what the product formulation statement is and the feature that's available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool to assist in creating the PFS. The manufacturer's product formulation statement is an option vendors may use to communicate with CM program operators on how their products may contribute to USDA's meal pattern requirements. To assist with creating a PFS, the PFS workbook is a feature available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool. It is accessible to food vendors who are registered users. Vendors can easily search credible food ingredients, select the appropriate food item, enter the quantity of each ingredient, and then the workbook will automatically calculate the meal contribution based on the information entered by the vendor. What you s Please keep in mind these documents are not provided are not approved or warranted by USDA. Manufacturers are responsible for ensuring their product is processed to meet the contribution as stated on the PFS. And program operators, you are encouraged to review and verify the information presented on a PFS prior to purchasing. So let's look at an example what a, a completed PFS may look like from the product formulation statement workbook. For this, state, uh, for this first example of the spinach chickpea pasta as a vegetable, you can see here in red um, the PFS detailing the actual volume of each vegetable per serving. And then you'll see down at the bottom the co complete crediting statement. Um, what you also don't see on the slide here is on the bottom of this um, PDF, you also have a space for the vendor to um, sign electronically and also to be able to download their letterhead so all of the pertinent information is available on the page. So now let's look at another example, this time spinach chickpea pasta crediting as a meat alternate. Again, the ingredient provided on the label shows that there's a, a blend of 60% chickpea flour and a 40% spinach puree. The serving size, again, is 5 ounces, which is also 5 eighths cup cooked. And so our total credible amount for 5 ounce serving of spinach chickpea pasta is 2.25 ounce equivalent meat alternate and 1 cup dark green vegetable. So how does this look in the PFS? Here we go. As, the last, as, as I showed in the last example, you see again that for each of the ingredients, you see the detailed information of the actual volume of each serving. And at the bottom again, you see the completed meal pattern contribution statement. So for additional information um, or guidance using the product formulation statement workbook, for those of you who are vendors, um, there is a training video available on the Food Buying Guide interactive web tool. And this is available for program operators um, and the state agency users also to view the, the videos just to see how a PFS workbook may 
can work. And also we have another webinar recording that's available on our Team Nutrition website, um, webinar titled The Food Buying Guide Goes Digital, one of the first webinars we did once um, we released both the web tool and the mobile app. Let's take a break here and, and do a, a quiz to test your knowledge. So the first one, how does a half a cup of pasta made of 100% vegetable flour credit? So you have your options here. Is it a quarter cup vegetable, half a cup vegetable, one cup of vegetable, one and a half cup of vegetable, or none of the, none of the above? Let's go ahead and open up the poll, please. So very good, everyone who answered a half a cup of vegetable. So one more quest, uh, quiz question. This one, select which of these options is true. A half a cup pasta made from 100% legume flour credits as two ounce equivalent meat alternate. Credits as a meat alternate pasta made of legume flour must be offered with additional meat, meat alternates such as tofu, cheese, or meat. And none of the above is true or all of the above is true. Let's open up the poll, please. Okay, very good everyone who has answered all of the above, meaning A, B, and A and B is true. So let's continue on. So for pastas made of vegetable flours and other non-vegetable ingredients, consistent with existing policy, pasta products made of vegetable flour and other non-vegetable ingredients may credit toward daily and weekly vegetable requirements, or in the case of legumes, meat alternate requirements, with a product formulation statement detailing the actual volume of vegetable flour per serving. As a reminder, the pasta needs to be served with another meat alternate in order to credit toward the component. Please note that this crediting does not apply to grain-based pasta products that contain small amounts of vegetable powder for color, such as spinach or sun-dried tomato powder. Then we have whole vegetables cut into noodles or spirals, such as spiralized zucchini or sweet potatoes, which continues to credit toward the respective vegetable subgroups based on the volume served. So looking at an example of this type of pasta, such as zoodles, the ingredient um, shown here is that this product contains butternut squash. The serving size is a half a cup. And so for the credible amount, we know vegetables credit based on volume served. So our total credible amount for a half a cup of zoodles is a half a cup legume, uh, half a cup red orange vegetable. Then I'm now going to hand the presentation over to Deborah, who will provide an overview of some of our menu planning resources available through Team Nutrition. Thank you, Kashaya. Let's take a moment to do our final poll to see how many of you are already familiar with the following menu planning resources available through Team Nutrition. We have listed here USDA standardized recipes for child nutrition programs, recipe e-newsletters, the menu planner for school meals, see and label verification rep report, other team nutrition resources not listed here, such as the food buying guide for child nutrition programs, or are you familiar with all of these resources, or are these all new to you? So let's go ahead and do this poll, and we'll take a look at the results. All right, looks like you are familiar with the vast majority of these resources, which is great. Well, just as a refresher then, I'm going to start off by giving, providing a highlight of our USDA standardized recipes. 
These delicious recipes can assist child nutrition program operators with meeting the child nutrition meal pattern requirements. They are developed to include legumes, whole grains, and or dark green and or red-orange vegetables. The recipes have been standardized to provide consistent quality and yields. They also provide crediting information, including the vegetable subgroups. This recipe collection contains 200 new and updated mouthwatering USDA standardized recipes for use in child nutrition programs. These recipes can be accessed using the web address provided at the bottom of the screen. Team Nutrition also provides a recipe newsletter. If you subscribe to correspondence from Team Nutrition, you should be receiving our recipe newsletter. To sign up for our newsletters, go to the Team Nutrition link shown on the slide. The, the next resource I'm going to tell you about is the menu planner for school meals for school year 2018-2019. The, the menu planner for school meals, school year 2018-2019, was released this past September. It is currently being updated to meet the meal pattern requirements for the coming school year. This foundational resource for school nutrition professionals provides step-by-step -step menu planning guidance and helps schools to put the dietary guidelines for Americans into practice. It is designed to guide the planning, preparing, providing, and marketing of great tasting, nutritious, and safe meals that meet the federal meal pattern requirements. The menu planner provides information to help integrate key topics in school nutrition programs such as nutrition, food safety, farm to school, USDA foods, seasonal foods, marketing, and also addresses things that will equip schools for the administrative review. The goal of the menu planner is to merge the technical guidance with additional support resources and a step-by-step -step guide to planning quality, reimbursable school meals that appeal to students. Next is the see and label verification reporting system. USDA developed this system to assist state agency reviewers, child nutrition program operators, and the food food industry to verify the status of a CN label and the validity of a CN label copied with a watermark. The verification system pro produces two comprehensive re reports. The CN label report, which not only provides the status of the label, but also includes the serving size and the meal pattern contribution of the product. The second report provides the manufacturer's contact information. Next, we have the USDA-approved software for menu analysis. USDA evaluates and approves two types of software for use in the school meal programs. The first is nutrient analysis software approved for use in the school meal programs. The second type of software is menu planning software approved for use in certification of compliance with the National School Lunch Program meal pattern requirements. All software is submitted to USDA for review voluntarily by private software companies. All, software, all, all submitted software undergoes a rigorous, standardized evaluation process to ensure that all the requirements for the software have been met before it is approved. All right, we'll now take some questions from the audience. However, before we answer questions submitted today, we want to take a moment to correct an example we included in our previous webinar on Ceremi. The example you see here for the Ceremi stick is 3.7 ounces. In the previous webinar, we said that it credited as one ounce equivalent meat, which is incorrect. Instead, it credits as 1.25 ounce equivalent meat. Who would like to receive continuing professional education unit certificate from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Commission on Dietetic Registration, otherwise known as CDR, please send an email to the 
web address provided here, email address provided here, and include your CDR registration number. And for FNS regional offices and food manufacturers only, if you have additional questions or comments, you can also email us at the address provided here, which is cmpntab at usda.gov. We would also like to announce that we have a new page on the Team Nutrition website for the crediting updates for child nutrition programs, Be in the Know web webinar series. On this page, you'll be able to register for upcoming webinars in the series. We still have two more to go. And you'll also be able to link to the past webinar recordings in the series once they are available. And also links to new memos related to the crediting updates. And finally, please feel free to visit our website, subscribe to our bi-monthly e-newsletter, and connect with us via email at teamnutrition at usda.gov and follow us on Twitter. Shown on this slide are the Team Nutrition's new Discover new foods decals that help promote healthy eating in your child nutrition program. These are available online for everyone to download. Only Team Nutrition schools and Team Team Nutrition CACFP organ organizations can order them in print. The enrollment to the Team Nutrition School and Team Nutrition CACFP organization is free and gives the opportunity to network with peers, share ideas, and receive exclusive prom promotions such as these new decals. We encourage that sponsoring organization or independent center that participates in the USDA's Child and Adult Care Food Program to sign up to become part of the Team Nutrition CACFP Organization Network at www.fns.usda.gov backslash TN backslash CACFP. If you are a school food authority, we encourage you to, take, to make sure each one of your schools that participates in the USDA's National School Lunch Program is part of the Team Nutrition School Network at www.fns.usda.gov backslash tn backslash schools. And as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and will be made available as a webcast. It usually takes at least four weeks or more before the recording is available. We will send out a notification on Partner Web when the webcast is available. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.